हुकुम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर टाइम दिस द टॉपिक फॉर दिस सेशन इज दया सागर साई Sai, the compassionate Lord. Let me bring to your notice some of the episodes related to this topic. Wherever in the world there are people with good thoughts. Engaged in good work, Bhagwan Baba fulfills all their aspirations, irrespective of whether they are aware of Baba's name and form or not. Yes, irrespective of that, if you have good thoughts and if you are engaged in good work, that's enough for Bhagwan. Here is an example to illustrate this fact. Simati Bharati Mai of Ambika Niketan lives in Surat in Gujarat. Ever since her childhood, she felt intense love for Lord Krishna. After having spent ten years continuously in worship of Krishna. the lord blessed her with a darshan and guided her to commence worship of shakti accordingly she spent the next 10 years in worshiping shakti pleased with her sincere efforts amba mata devi manifested in front of her and gave a directive that bharati mai should construct her a temple to fulfill this directive of devi bharati mai collected an amount of 1 rupee per person constructed the devi temple and installed an idol of amba mata amba mata devi along the side the temple a cow shed a veda parsala to accommodate 50 students was also constructed in addition to this several dispensaries and old people's homes for the aged and the sick were constructed at various places all this was done in accordance with the directive of the divine mother amba mata Devi. Well, around the same time, something wondrous happened. A message written in Vibhuti appeared on a wall of the house of a Sai devotee who lived nearby. It read, "Study the life story of Bharati Mai." Initially, Bharati Mai did not believe this, but when she saw the constant flow of vibhuti appearing on the wall she bowed in reverence in front of swami and installed a photograph of his in the shrine at her house after this she realized that a part of naivedyam which she offered every day used to disappear it was a sign from swami that he was accepting it One day the students of Veda Parshala expressed a desire to go for Swami's darshan accordingly they all came to Prashantanayam Swami asked them to chant the Veda mantra he appreciated their efforts blessed them and gifted them with clothes he gave darshan to Bharati Mai in the form of 
Devi Ambamata, her desired deity. She totally surrendered to Swami and also expressed a desire. A large hospital was being constructed at Surat by the Jain community and she aspired to construct a diagnostic center with modern facilities attached to it. Swami blessed her and guided her to travel to UK and USA. During her visit abroad, devotees of Swami residing there helped her to collect the desired amount within two weeks and she was able to fulfill her aspiration. Srimati Bharati Mai believes all this was possible only due to Bhagwan Sri Sat Sai Baba. Sai Baba's grace, the one who fulfills all the good aspirations of his devotees. Wonderful, wonderful miracle indeed. In fact, it was Sant Jhaneswar who said, Swami, shall I call you Saguna? Attributes. Are Nirguna? Attributeless. Shall I call Sakar? Formful. Are Nirakara? Formless. But, Govinda, in any form I may worship, you are one and the same. When the formless divinity assumes a form, he incarnates as God in human form. This Saguna Rupa of his comes to earth for the welfare of mankind. Bhagavan Sri Sai Baba has incarnated on earth for the same purpose and is constantly engaged in the welfare of the mankind. Bhagavan Baba says, I am not a Nayak, meaning leader, but I am only a Sevak, a, a, a servant. I am a servant. I am a servitor. I am born to serve. And in accordance with this statement, he serves not only those who worship him, but serves all mankind. Swami says, my life is my message. And right from childhood, the Kalyana Guna, the Bhagavan Baba, has been translating his words into deeds. The little Satya was ever engaged in giving food and clothes to the needy as Bala Satchanarayana. He started the Pandari Bhajan group and attracted not only the residents of Puttaparthi but also the folks from the neighborhood. Through this bhajan group, he inspired people to tread the right path of devotion and also beckoned them to keep their homes, their surroundings and their minds clean. He taught them that the pure vibrations that are emitted through Nama Sankirtan keep deadly diseases away. After the declaration of his avatarhood, he started monumental projects in three spheres of education, health care, care and drinking water supply to fulfill the promise given by him to his mother, Iswarama. The entire world is acknowledging him and lauding these projects today. Anyone can avail these benefits completely free of cost. Tasks on such mammoth scale are possible only to God, who is Kalyana Gunakari, whose virtues are beneficial. In the earlier times, when the crowds of devotees were not so large, the bhajans at Prasantanam were held every morning and evening for a duration of to one and a half hours. And the bhajan, three haratis, one Pavana Purusha Saisha, two Om Jai Jagadishwar Hare, the third one Karyo 
కరుణానిధే దేవర్ సంగ్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఆరతీస్ ది హెడ్ ప్రీస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద టెంపుల్ యూస్ టు హెయిల్ ఇన్ లౌడ్ వాయిస్ బలో భగవాన్ శ్రీ సత్సాయి బాబాకి జయ మూలో పుట్టభర్తి మహాత్మ శ్రీ సచ్చిదానంద మూర్తికి జయ and all the devotees used to repeat jai in a loud chorus later after swami's mission stepped up the duration of bhajan was reduced and bhagwan baba asked for only one harati to be sung a few years later swami told everyone that instead of jai after that harati everyone should say lokas samastar sukino bhavantu thrice and end the session with om shanti shanti meaning thereby let all beings in all the three worlds be happy that all attain peace swami also has said whenever you sing to me with a pure heart and sacred selfless thought i always keep my gracious glance upon you if a person has done a great sacrifice during his lifetime or any good deeds in his previous births swami especially showers his grace on him is it possible for anyone to survive without god's grace impossible such benevolent thoughts can come only from kalyana guna kalyana guna bhagwan baba who constantly thinks about the welfare of mankind swami also lays emphasis on the fact that each one must fulfill his duty without expecting any rewards one has to always suffer the consequences of good and bad karma collected or past births swami says that chaga roopa karma sacrifice destroys the bondage of karma and frees us the story dates back to the year 1935 there lived a couple in a village called kikeri in manja district of karnataka who were ordained devotees of shirdi sai nath they had one son when this boy was about 12 to 13 years of age both husband and wife passed away and the boy was orphan since there was no one to look after him he left home and joined a group of wandering sadhu bairagis he visited many places of pilgrimage along with them while traveling in this manner in 1953 he arrived at puttaparthi he read the telugu letters inscribed on the arch of the main entrance bhagwan sri satya sai baba prashantalayam and felt attracted to the word bhagwan a thought crossed his mind that he should test the power of this bhagwan having spent a lot of time with sadhus he was now familiar with tantric vidya but instead of progressing on the spiritual path he had developed many vices in the company of the sadhus the name of this young man was b halagappa and this was his first darshan of bhagwan baba a few years after his visit to puttaparthi halagappa journeyed to the ashram of swami shivananda at rishikesh he met swami shraddhananda and spent some time in the ashram during his stay he heard about sri satyasai and and his visit to rishikesh swami siddhananda told him your future can become happy only with the blessings of bhagwan sri satyasai baba halagappa stayed at rishikesh 
until Swami Siddhananda attained Samadhi. Then he traveled southward and went to Puttaparthi. Once again he took Bhagavan Baba's darshan. But he felt that Baba completely ignored him. This was a new experience for him as he felt that sadhus and sannyasis always attracted people and got attention. He went back confused, unsure. After a few days later, when he heard that Swami was at Whitefield, he went there. This time, Swami did not disappoint him. Along with Darshan, Swami also blessed him with Sambhasan. Baba told him, in the wandering aimlessly, go and find a job. Halakappa obeyed Swami's directive and found a job as a laborer in the sugar factory at Pandavapura. He started attending bhajans at a devotee's house in Mysore. Then one day, suddenly he lost his job. After that, an intense desire to visit Puttaparthi arose in him. And he left for the ashram. When he reached the railway crossing at Penugunda, he heard Swami calling out to him from a car which was waiting at the railway crossing. Halgappa was overjoyed. As he reached the car, Swami told him, Go back home. Your job is now permanent. Saying so, Swami placed a twenty rupees note in his hand. Halagappa was ecstatic. He spent every rupee from it on enjoyment and returned to Pandavapura. On reaching home, he was told his job was now permanent at a daily wage of rupees two. In those days, this was not a small amount, but for Halgappa's needs and vices, it was not enough. He was also used to get the urge to travel to Puttaparthi often. So he was always short of funds. By and by, taking advantage of crowds at Puttaparthi, he started stealing there. Once he had gone for Swami's darshan, Halgappa overstayed. The money was over, but he had a remedy for that. He stole a devotee's suitcase and he hid it near the banyan tree on the hillside. Devotee made a big hue and cry about his suitcase being stolen. So Swami assured him, saying, Your suitcase will be returned to you. Halagappa was standing among the devotees who were waiting for Swami's darshan. Sri Kasturi came to him and told him, Go inside, Swami is waiting for you. When Halagappa went to Baba, he rebuked him harshly with strong words and told him to return the suitcase to the devotee. As Swami manifested vibhuti for him, Halagappa thought Swami would also give some money. But this time he did not do so. As he came out, Sri Kasturi gave him enough money for the railway fare to travel back home. Halgappa returned, but his troubles worsened. He got married and expenses mounted. He could not go for Swami Darshan as and when he wanted. He had no option but worship Swami's photograph at home and cry silently in his heart. Finally, after a long lapse of time, he went to Puttaparthi for Guru Purnima in the year 1963. But on reaching there, he heard that Swami had suffered a paralytic stroke. Sri Kasturi told him Swami has taken somebody's illness upon him. When Halagappa saw Swami, he wondered to himself, Can one who is God be in such a condition? 
Just then, Swami asked for some water to drink. He drank a sip and sprinkled some with his right hand and on the affected parts of his body. And in a moment, he was back to normal and stood up. He even started giving his divine discourse. He spoke elaborately on the three Sai incarnations. The incident had an impact on Halagappa's mind. He thought to himself, if Swami is really God, tomorrow he will give me Father Namaskar and blessing and then I will give up all my vices. The next day Halagappa thought, translated into reality, happily went back to his village, but now he is completely a transformed man. In a few days, Vibhuti started falling from Swami's photograph in his house. And Amrut started oozing non-stop. Yes, from a ring and a pendant of Swami's. Halagappa's home turned into pilgrim center for devotees. Halagappa started orphanage in his house and started looking after destitute children. Along with his own children, he provided education to all of these destitutes and also inculcated good and values in them. With his sincere efforts, in this direction, he set an example for others to follow. All this came about only because Swami destroyed the bondage of heart, of Halagapas P, past karma, and showered His grace on Him. So, this is the quintessence of this session. Thank you. We'll meet again.